Hello, I am Zarkoon, this is World of Warships Legends. Rank 16, Azerlay Nelson, commander on the screen. This is the build I'm using for the Tier 7 Tech Tree British Battleship Vanguard, which recently received yet another buff. So, does this buff make the ship better? I'm sure that's what you all want to know, probably the reason you clicked on this video. Well, let's talk about exactly what the buff did. So according to the patch notes for the February 2021 update, the Vanguard received three buffs. The first, hit points restored to the Citadel by the repair party have been increased from 16% to 25%. Now, typically, if you take a hit to the Citadel on your battleship, your repair party is only going to be able to repair, I think, up to 10% of that damage, while the Vanguard's repair party now restores Citadel damage up to 25%. So that is pretty good. Nevertheless, you don't really want to be taking Citadel hits. 25% isn't 50%, isn't 75%. It's not a lot. Second buff, shell grouping improved by about... 2.6%, and this is a quote from the patch notes, quote, and in so many words, it's just a slight buff to the accuracy, end quote. So we'll come back to shell grouping in a moment, because that's the one I'm going to talk about most. Third and final buff, repair party modified. It now restores the same amount of hit points, except it does it over the course of 10 seconds rather than 28. So, that is noticeable. You'll see when I use the repair party in this battle that the hit points get restored very quickly in, as the notes say, 10 seconds rather than 28. So the health bar just climbs up really quick. And if you've got a fire burning on you and you start the repair party when there's 20 seconds left on the fire, by the time it's done, it's still going to be burning for another 10 seconds. So if you deploy the repair party in the way that I do when you're on fire and you want to time the repair party ending as the fire ends so that it restores exactly the most hit points that it can restore, then now you've got to wait longer. But the accuracy buff is a little bit more significant because I've always thought the Vanguard is a solid ship. And get ready for this, because I'm sure some people will disagree with it, but A, it's quite a tanky ship. It already had an improved repair party before this buff that could restore more hit points than your typical battleship. So if it took healable damage, like fire damage, flooding damage, even regular armor-piercing penetrations, it could heal a fair amount of that back, and it's tanky in that way. Also, the armor is good, unless you are giving a flat broadside. And of course, the firing angles on the Vanguard's guns, I mean, you can see just how much broadside you have to give to get all four turrets on target. The firing angles on the guns leave a little bit to be desired. Of course, you see many Vanguard players sailing this thing around flat broadside, and so they take... Citadel hits and die very quickly. The way to mitigate that is to simply move your ship uh, open and close the angle. Basically, Battleship 101. I don't accept that this is a bad ship because it has bad firing angles. It's quite a good ship. Anyway, the accuracy buff. The one thing that has been holding the Vanguard back, in my opinion, and the opinions of other people is that the accuracy sometimes leaves a little bit to be desired. You can shoot a salvo and find that your shells fly all over the place because the dispersion just sends them everywhere and it you could be forgiven for thinking you were actually playing a German battleship in some cases when you unleash a salvo from these guns. The accuracy buff, though, that the Vanguard received was to shell grouping, not to dispersion, and there is a difference. I'll try to illustrate that difference to you. So, 
Shell grouping just refers to how close the shells stick together when they get fired out of your guns. The dispersion is something else. Now, you know, in the airstrike mode, we've got the test event for carriers. If you've taken out the dive bombers and you have engaged in a drop of the bombs, you get this oval-like reticule that is green, and you put that over the ship, release the bombs, and the two bombs that the planes drop fall within that oval. That is the dispersion oval, let's call it. The same thing happens when you shoot battleship or cruiser or destroyer guns. Your aim point, wherever you're aiming at on the map, is, I think, the center of the dispersion oval. You can't see it, but it's there. And then when your shells travel out of the gun, they go into that dispersion oval and they fall somewhere within that dispersion oval. So in order for the guns to be more accurate, you want the shells to disperse less within that oval and hit closer to the point at which you're aiming. Therefore, the shell grouping is not as much of a buff to accuracy as dispersion would be because it doesn't really matter if you've got two shells hugging each other as they fly through the air and all of the rest of the shells still disperse and you get maybe those two shells hit the ship and then the rest of them just fall into the water near the ship so the dispersion much more useful than the shell grouping nevertheless the vanguard's guns are accurate enough and the AP continues to hit as hard as it always did, as evidenced by our shot there against the Gneisenau. And to finish out this game, we're going to get a wicked shot against a cruiser, which the Vanguard remains effective at dealing with. And the Vanguard is also a good ship because of its versatility. It doesn't have super overpowered spicy high explosive in the way that the Conqueror, when it was available for rental, did, but its high explosive hits hard enough. It deals enough damage. I think the shot against the enemy Hipper already demonstrated that. I think we got 6,000 in a salvo against that Hipper, destroyed his torpedo tubes, broke his engine temporarily, all that kind of stuff. So the HE hits hard, it's got a good fire chance, and the AP is also fantastic. So you can switch between them actively and have a lot of success. And that is probably how you're going to have the most success in the Vanguard. Simply shoot the armor piercing at broadside battleships and cruisers, and you'll get good results with punchy AP. If you've got angled battleships, switch to the high explosive, You'll do a fair amount of damage with high explosive penetration, and you'll start fires, which will do damage over time. It's just a very nice, versatile ship. Literally, the only thing it's got going against it is the firing angles on the guns, which are rather poor, and still the accuracy, which isn't all there, although the 2.6% buff to shell grouping does seem to have helped a little. The Vanguard always has been, at least since it started getting buffed, this has to be like the 5,000th buff they've done to it, it's always been a good ship. And now, I think it's just a little more solid. It's a solid tier 7 battleship. I like it, I think it's effective. It is probably more difficult to play than some of your other battleships, and you do have to be mindful about the angles you are presenting to the enemy, which necessitates map awareness and knowledge of how to angle in the first place, something that not every player of World of Warships Legends clearly is equipped with. But if you are equipped with it, uh, you might consider taking out the Vanguard or grinding to it. It's never going to hurt you to grind to a tech tree tier 7 ship, right? I mean, if there is a point to this game, the point is to grind out all the tech trees and have all the ships, right? So eventually you're going to get the Vanguard. I think it's a good ship. You can see that we've done 114,000 damage throughout the course of this battle, which is a respectable amount. 
We've noticed that we've got a Massachusetts and a Chapayev out here chasing two very low health cruisers. So we are going to help them finish off the Massachusetts and the Chapayev, which is going to put our team over the edge in terms of points of winning the game. There we get three shatters against the Massachusetts. That's probably because I'm using Azerlain Nelson with a big seven skill that cuts down on the penetration of the armor piercing. I think Cunningham might actually be a better choice for this particular ship, and I may test him out as time goes on. Take a look at this shot against the Chapayev, though. No problems penetrating his armor. Deleted. He's dead. 141,000 damage. We get the Devastating Strike Medal and the High Caliber, and that is how we're going to finish this short game in the Vanguard. So I hope you enjoyed my discussion on its buffs, and I hope it gives you a better idea of what to think of this ship. Again, I think it's a good ship, and I do like it. It's a solid Tier 7 battleship, and this was a solid Tier 7 battleship game. At least I think it was. Hope you liked the video. If so, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already done that. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Whoa, 3,000 base XP. Pretty good result. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.